السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وصحبه ومن وله اللهم زدنا علما ولا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ حذيتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم افتح مصامع قلوبنا لذكرك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه واهل بيته كما تحب ربي وترضى السلام عليكم my dear brothers and sisters uh, we praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings on his noble messenger our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his noble family his companions and on all those who love him and try their best to follow him in their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in useful knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to his remembrance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let our hearts divert from the path of obedience may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never bring doubts in our hearts about the truth today we are going to discuss together and study together surah number 83 from juz amma which is called surah al mutaffifin so Surah Al-Mutaffifin, according to the majority of scholars, is a Makkan Surah, all of it. However, there are some narrations that are attributed to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that this Surah was revealed in the early Medinan period when the Prophet ﷺ got to Medina, he found that people were cheating in trading. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this. However, if we look at the history, the traders were in Mecca and the agriculturists were in Medina. But again, in Medina, there was also some trade because dates was bought and sold. So. Others have said that perhaps to reconcile these two different uh, opinions that part of the surah, the first four ayats were revealed in the early Medinan period after the Prophet ﷺ got there and the rest of the surah was revealed in Mecca because we have examples in the Quran of many surahs that were revealed in portions, uh, some here, some there. So that's the, probably the best way to reconcile the differing opinions. And it's not that critical because the style of the Quran in, in this surah is more of a Meccan because it deals with uh, Iman and it deals with the Akhirah and it deals with some of the issues that the, the opponents of Islam uh, were bringing and putting forth. Uh, so And the, the style of the short ayats is also Meccan uh, sort of... Uh, uh, an indication that it was a Meccan surah. Anyway, with that introduction, we will start the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Waylul lil mutaffifin Alladheena idhaktalu ala nnaasi yastawfoon وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ So let's deal with these five ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wail. Wail, as we have mentioned before, there are different interpretations but the word whale generally means something that is cursed something that is uh, to be destroyed it's uh, absolute destruction uh, 
So whale means absolute, it's a curse that an absolute destruction is coming, is coming on the, what is mentioned after that. There is another uh, opinion that whale is actually a valley in Jahannam for the people who are mentioned after this. And it could be both. So in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this whale is used in many places in the Quran, Wailulil mutaffifin. So the word mutaffifin is used here for the first time. Taffafa, from which it comes, means to practice cheating by shortchanging others while when I am purchasing something, I demand to get all of it for myself, even the smallest quantity. For example, if somebody is weighing dates for me and the scale goes up to the two kilos that I want, but it's just shy of it and putting one extra date will make it go quite a bit. I still say, put that extra date for me. I want my full measure. But on the other hand, when we are measuring to give others, we shortchange them. We give them little less. So this small amount of cheating in business, this is what mutaffifin, people who do this regularly, that they will cheat others regularly in commerce, in business, for little gain, little gain, even if it's for a few grams. So they are, in a way, they are defrauding people. Now, some of us might say, well, alhamdulillah, I'm not a businessman, so this doesn't apply to me. But there are implications because we can extend this to other occupations. For example, I am an hourly worker. I'm being paid by the hour. And I cheat my employer by using my time in doing personal things, taking long breaks, you know, taking my time for salah, taking off early to work, spending time on my phone, checking my emails and Facebooks and all of that, and letting the time that I am supposed to work be used in other things. So I, I'm shortchanging the one who is paying me. So this is another way of the same being a mutaffifi. And we can extend it out into other fields in generality. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, one day he saw a man praying in the, in the masjid. And when he was finished, he said that, you have done taffafa, you have shortchanged Allah because your sajda and your ruku were not done properly. They were you cut through them, you shortchanged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did not give him what his due is. So then we can then extend it more into our own professions, you know, people who are in the service industry. So if I am a lawyer or a doctor and I'm supposed to provide a certain amount of service, and I don't. Or I charge more hours than I have put in. Also, it can be extended into cheating people out of their rights, such as the rights of Allah, that I skimp on my salah. I get through it very quickly. I don't give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his full due. Now I'm skimping, shortchanging the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I had a contract of nikah with my wife. She had certain rights on me. I have certain rights on her. Either of us is not giving the full right of the other. Cheating, for example, the children of the rights that they have on us. And we can extend this. So this is not, although here it specifies a merchant who is buying and selling, measuring and weighing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that even the small degree of cheating, which you say, well, it's not a big deal. You know, I'm not doing a big Ponzi scheme where I'm looting people of billions of dollars. 
But if I'm cheating someone of five cents worth, it comes under the category of mutaffifin. I'm doing it knowingly, I'm doing it consistently. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, curse be. May the destruction be on one who cheats. Now, if this is the situation for a small amount of cheating, just imagine how big it would be for a greater degree of cheating. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although this meaning is embedded in this word of mutaffifin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on in the next two ayats to explain it so that there is no confusion about it. When he says, who are these people? الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْقُونَ That when they measure to take from people, they are overly aggressive in demanding what they get. Normal structure would be اِكْتَالُوا مِنَ النَّاسِ From taking from people. But Allah SWT is using word عَلَى النَّاسِ Means they are very aggressive in demanding. No, I have to have my full share. So, Yes, tawfun means to take in full measure. So this is when I'm taking. But then the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ And when they measure to others, وَزَنُوهُمْ They weigh some merchandise to others. يُخْسِرُ Make, they, make them undergo a loss. They cause a loss by giving them less. They diminish, they decrease it, they shortchange it, even by a small amount. So this is the characteristic of the person. And this is a symptom. Why does this person do this? Because logically, he's not going to get wealthy by a little bit here, a little bit there, cheating people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he does for us, a root cause analysis. Why does this person do this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala ne yadunnu ulaika annahum mab'uthun. The root cause is yadunnu. He, ala yadunnu. Does he not think that they themselves will be mab'uthun, raised up for the, in the hereafter, for the day of judgment? In other words, this person, Allah SWT is saying, does he not think? In other words, he thinks he's not going to be raised for a day of judgment. He doesn't think that he will be held accountable. He doesn't think, he thinks he can get away. Nobody knows. Because there is no real belief that there is someone watching me. That I will be held accountable. So this is a symptom of their wrong thinking that they will not be accounted for, that there is no day of judgment. So you can take that and turn it the other way, that a real belief, the arkan of Iman that we have, one of which is belief in the day of judgment, it should produce a positive change in the character and actions of a person. Because a person who truly believes that I will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even the smallest things will be there, would not do that. So the fact that they are doing this is a sign that they don't really in haqiqah believe that I will be held or they will be held accountable. Therefore the sign of real iman is how we interact with people in trade and everything else. It's not just about claiming that, yes, I believe. Because if we truly believe, we would not shortchange anybody in any of their rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions they will not be raised again. On a day with great avima of greatness, an awesome day. And the word avim comes from adama also, which means bones, something that's very strong, very severe. And we know the day of judgment is a very severe day. And there are some descriptions of that that will come after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Yoma yaqoomu nasu li rabbil alameen. What day is this? Yomun avim, a day 
Yakumunas, where mankind will stand. Where are they going to stand? Last week we had said that Allah is going to level this earth completely. Level ground, no mountains, no valleys, no shade, nothing. They will be standing. All of mankind from Adam salam till the last child that's born will be standing in one level field. How? By the command of Allah, through the blowing of the second blowing of the of the sur, the trumpet has been translated. People will come out in an adult form from the from the ground, wherever their tailbone was, as the hadith says. They will stand up and they'll be rushing there to the day of judgment. In what shape? In the shape that they were born in originally. What clothes? None. No clothes. Originally, like we were born, men and women, without every, anything being removed, will be there with no clothes. No place to stand, like we learned last week in, in Surah in Shikak. No place to move. When Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha heard this, she said, Ya Rasulullah, men and women standing naked? And feeling that haya, he sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Aisha, that day is so severe, with so much awe and fear, that no one will even care to look at anyone else, because they'll only be worried about themselves, themselves. So, we have to be very, very prepared that this day is coming. Who will we be standing in front of? لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately for the day of judgment after a long standing the hadith tells us where people will get so fed up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the sun in its form it's called the sun one or two miles or meal above and the heat will be such that the Prophet sallallahu said people will be sweating from it some the, their sweat will be down to their ankles to their knees to their waist some in one hadith to their ears they'll be drowning in their sweat and it will be so severe that the kuffar will say start the day of judgment we can't take this anymore and in some narrations as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the day is like fifty thousand years it means it's like a long time nothing that we have any clue about because everybody will be taken to account. No shade, except when the shade, when the ash of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is brought down by eight angels. Because there is a significance of that too. Normally, four angels you know, carry the ash of Allah. On that day, there will be eight, as the hadith tells us, because Allah is going to be angry that day. And four angels are not enough to handle that ash because of the impact of that and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend in his own way to start the day of judgment so on that day nobody if you believe in the day of judgment or don't believe it's not a matter of choice it is everybody whether you believed or not will stand in front of Rabbul Alameen in the dunya we had a choice you want to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all night you can stand you never want to stand, you don't have to stand. You can choose to bow in ruku, you can choose to prostrate in front of Allah in sajda, or you can say, no, I will not. On that day, there is no choice. The choice is only in this life. Amr on that day, yawma is in lillah, only for Allah. The command is only Allah. So we will all stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody who does not believe that will act in ways of disobedience, will act ignoring all of these. And if we say we believe and we still do this, then there is a problem between what we are saying and what our heart believes. 
So then after this misgiving, this wrong thought, yadunnu, they, they thought that there is no such thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates all of those wrong ideas that there is no accountability by saying kalla. Kalla means denial of all of their misgivings, all of their wrong thoughts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying not at all. This is not the case as they think. In other words, there is definitely a day of judgment.